Hi, my name is Che Rodriguez. I am a senior horticulturist here at the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens. I'm an avid pollinator enthusiast and an all around bee guy. I would like to take some time today to just explain my world and how I view things in pollinators. Pollinators are bats, birds, bees, beetles. Throughout the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens, you'll normally catch our pollinators moving around in the morning times um, from garden to garden, more specifically our Riverview Garden, which has a multitude of um, different plant species that the pollinators tend to go to collect nectar and pollen. Did you know that pollinators uh, facilitate 90% of the world's flowering plant production and also one in three bites of food are directly from pollinators? Pollinators create many habitats and ecosystems that animals rely on for shelter. So one of my very special species that are pretty close to my heart is uh, the bumblebee. Um, I like it so much because it's a bumblebee and looking at it, you don't really think that that thing can fly and it can, you know, bumblebee's gonna bumble. Pollinators are in peril and we need your help because pollinators are victims of deforestation and also chemical misuse. When I say chemical misuse, I'm talking about over fertilizing your yards. If there's a weed, people feel the need to, to use Roundup and it's a broadcast spray or a broadcast chemical and what it does is it attacks the actual pollinator itself, in this case our native bee species. And it's just not good for them to ingest those toxins and those chemicals and it basically causes a die off. There's so many things you can do to get involved with helping pollinators. The main thing I would say is research. Uh, research how you can get involved here in Jacksonville and uh, Northern Florida and create a bee house or create a, a pollinator pit stop or even if you're just leaving a section in your yard where you have um, logs that have fallen. I know we get hurricanes. Leave a section in your yard where those fallen leaves have just taken over and just kind of let that be a little ecosystem in itself though. Even having that in your yard is going to help pollinators. You can also plant for pollinators which um, going to a box store and just asking, hey, what plant works for me in this situation? Or, hey, what, what do you think would draw more pollinators to my yard? Some of the common plants that we recommend on grounds here at the Jacksonville Zoo and Garden are milkweed, which is a good host plant for the monarch. Um, we also have our uh, Plumbago auriculata, which is also a nectar source for the Cassius blue butterfly. And we also have uh, African blue basil, which is also a huge nectar source and a huge um, pollen source for bees, bats, butterflies, birds, any, any pollinator really. So some of our uh, bee species are solitary species. When I say solitary, that means that they don't have a hive. They don't have a queen. So these solitary species fly, th fly around collecting nectar and com collecting pollen and they're looking for spaces to nest and lay their young. So when we think bees, we generally think about honeybees in a, a basic hive structure. Well, with solitary bees, they don't have that hive structure. They're basically out on their own foraging for themselves. So they need a nesting site to come back and lay their eggs. The reason why these solitary species are important is because they do so much pollination. Um, saving all the bees is important, but right now the European honeybee, Apis mellifera, has most of the spotlight because it, produ it produces honey. And who doesn't like honey? But in reality, we really need to be saving our, our native species because they are really, really important in the production of not only the foods that we eat, but the flowers that we enjoy as well. Creating a bee house is actually a really good idea and it keeps the bees from burrowing inside the soffit of your house, so it's a win-win. When creating a bee house, you wanna use recycled wood, you wanna use basically wood that isn't treated. When the wood is actually treated itself, it contains chemicals inside of the treatment process. So by using that recycled wood, not only are you upcycling, but you're helping the environment as well. You're gonna take the pieces inside. Um, I generally just use a drill and I cut different holes corresponding to the different size solitary bees that I've noticed that are flying around my yard or the area throughout the zoo. In particular, you wanna make sure that it's three to four feet off of the ground. That way the bees can readily get to it and that way, you know, we're here in Florida, it rains constantly, things flood all the time. So you wanna make sure that that bee house is elevated off of the ground. So our butterflies and bees are very, very hardworking when they're collecting nectar and they're collecting pollen. Um, this right here is a, a pollinator pit stop. It's basically designed um, just with what we have. You can use recycled whatever around your house. Uh, mulch pieces inside of here. You can use pine straw over the mulch pieces. Here we have cork and rock. Um, you basically just wanna take a saucer or anything that looks similar to this, put some water in it, fill it to about this line right here, and put it somewhere where you see activity. That way these hard working bees and butterflies can have a chance to drink and take a break. 
this is just a good idea because we don't want those bees going to bodies of water and drowning. So this basically just offers them a good chance to get a drink and just kind of hang out. So I want to thank you guys for listening today. Um, and I hope that pollinators are becoming more important to you guys as much as they're super important to me. Um, get more involved, uh, plant for pollinators, do what you can, do some research and just get out there and help save these guys. For more information and general buzz about Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. <laughs>